Hey what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're taking a look at the brand new hair painter. This tool simply allows you to sketch and paint hair directly on your 3D model. It is pretty interesting how this works, it is quick and also comes with a ton of parameters that you can work with and get the best result from what you're creating. And today we're going to simply explore how you can get started with this and create some very interesting hair for your models. And for those who like to get this, then you can simply go over to the link in the description and check this out. And with that said, let's dive right into Blender and take a look at how this actually works. So with Blender simply open up right here, how you get started with this is pretty simple. As all you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference and then you need to go over to the file path and because this downloads a Blender file, you need to put that Blender file in a folder and navigate to the folder path and load this as an asset library. And once you've got that ready, you can simply click on the bugger menu, save your preference and close the window. Now if you drag out the new panel, we can switch to the asset browser and if you click on the drop down, you go over to your hair painter, you would notice that we've got two stuff right here. Now for a quick test, let's actually go ahead and explore how this actually works. So what we have here is a simple sphere and to get things going, you would notice that we've got two stuff. First is the hair painter and then we've got the hair card maker. This is pretty straightforward. This, however, is where things get very interesting. First off, before we talk about how you can start creating this hair, I would like to mention that the hair painter tool is divided into three main hair painting types. And this includes the single draw, which allows you to draw directly on the surface. Then we've got the bordered guide, which is perfect for eyebrows, stash, beards, stubbles, and also velous hair. And for those who have no idea what this is, this is basically those tiny facial hairs that are almost invisible to the eye. These hair types are softer, lighter than coarse hair and you typically find them on the lower part of a human face. And finally, we've got the single draw first on surface and this is mostly for pop out braids. All of these types that I've just mentioned are the basic ways that you get to create hair with this tool. And to get started, it's this simple. All you need to do is to drag this and drop it right into your viewport. Now, once you do that, you need to unparent this from this and to quickly do that is by simply clicking and dragging all the way here and then you can go ahead and get rid of this one as right here we can start doing the painting if you click on the drop down within the collection you would notice that we've got different collections for different things from the eyelash to the eyebrow all the way to the beard and the basic way of getting things started is by simply going to the respective one you like to paint. For example, like to paint some eyelashes, you'd notice that we've got two of those. We've got the curve and the hair. So to each of these, you need to go over to the modifier, go over to the root object, use the eyedropper and select the object you like to do the painting on. One thing to keep in mind is by default, the mirroring is turned on. So once you paint on one part, it gets painted on the other. Now, another thing to also keep in mind is this which is the curve is where the painting actually happens. So once you have that selected, you can press the tab key and with that selected, you can now simply start painting. However, you need to define some things. This has to be a poly and this has to be on the surface. So we can now do the first drawing and you would notice that automatically we've got something there. I kind of think that this is the backside. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right about the point like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw and you notice that we've got something here. So with this here, we can actually go in and increase the scale. And once we have that ready, we can now proceed to do some growth. Possibly we like this to grow out a bit. If we like to do some tilting, we can also go ahead and tilt this. Possibly we like to tilt it up, down and every other way that you create stuff is mostly like this. Now we're just going to go ahead and jump all the way out so I can show you guys what it looks a bit rendered so you can see that. So this is basically what it looks rendered. So we can have that selected. We can tilt this if we want, and then we can also scale this up, bring that down, grow it, you know, all of that stuff. Now we're going to switch over to a full character model. This model is courtesy the folks at Human Generator. Amazing guys. They've got some interesting models right there. You can actually go ahead and check it out. So to start creating this with a full character like this is very simple. We'll still have to go through the very same steps that we did earlier, which is bringing in the hair painter. And then we can go in and specify the root object. And once we have the root object selected, just like we did with the first example, we need to select the eyelash curve, press the tab key, go over to the edit mode, set this to poly and change the projecting type from cursor to surface. And once we're done, we can paint in the eyelash. And this has two categories. We've got the up and we've got the lower. The parameters for the up are specific for the up one and the parameters for the lower 
are also specific for that one as well. Now, when you're done with the eyelash curve, you can now switch over to the eyelash hair. Within the eyelash hair, this is where you can subdivide the hair depending on what you're trying to create. And you can create a number of children for this. Currently, the basic number count is set to two. You can crank that up if you want. You can also play with the clumping as well. You can choose to grow the eyelash, trim it, seed this, and also play with the density. So there's a ton of parameters for this that you can use to style these things however you want. And now that we have the single draw out of the way, let's explore the bodded guide. And for the bodded guide, this is pretty interesting. So for this one, we also do the same thing that we did for the eyelash. We'll go over to the eyebrow curve, use the eyedropper button to select the main object as the root object, and we'll do the very same thing for the eyebrow hair. And in this case, because this is the bordered guide, we're simply going to create a border that represents the shape of the eyebrow that we want. We're going to simply make more like an ellipse shaped curve, which is gonna be an enclosed one. So we're gonna go all the way up and down, and we're going to create a guide that would exist inside. This guide is what actually tells the direction of the hair, while the border simply controls the root of where this hair is growing from. So with this, we can now start making some adjustments right here. So we can choose to drop the count. So the sample count, we can choose to drop that. We can also choose to drop the copy count as well. Meanwhile, if you like to move this around, of course you can. What we can do is tap O on the keyboard and this is going to automatically get us the proportional editing. I'm going to also click right here, select connected only. And if we tap G on the keyboard, actually let's go ahead and select the portion. If we tap G on the keyboard, we should be able to move things around. So I can go ahead have that selected and we can also move these parts as well. We can turn that off if we choose, tap G on the keyboard and extend this. Again, this is totally up to you and what you're trying to create. So you can move these parts around, you know, mix these things up and get some very interesting results. At any point in time, you're thinking about making some updates, some changes to this, you can always rely on either of these two. Now within the bordered guide, there are two types of hair section. First one is the main hair. So we can turn this off and you can see what the result looks like. And we can also go ahead and turn this off. And of course, you see, we don't have anyone. So if I turn the main one on, we have this. And if I turn the extra, you notice we've got a bit of extra one right there. We can choose to, you know, drop the length down. We can drop the density and these are for the extras so you can play with these parameters again depending on what section you like to deal with or work with same thing can also be said for the curls as for the curls you can also choose to play with the parameters and get some interesting result and with this done let's talk about the beard so for the beard this is literally the very same thing and because this is more of a bothered guide creation you can simply use the same formula that we used in creating the eyebrows to create the mustache and the beard and just like we looked at with the eyebrow, you can also transform this however you want. Maybe a bit of rotation, some scaling, some translation, you know, depending on how you like to style this, you can go ahead and explore them. And because these are collections, you can always make duplicate copies of individual collection. So in this case, we've just made the mustache and a tiny beard. What we can do is to go ahead and make a duplicate of the beard collection. And now that we have this done, all we need to do, select the beard curve, go over to the edit mode and delete the previous curves. And then with this, you can now create multiple beard like curves and have independent property control them. So now that we've just created a side beard, we can actually enable the topper, lower or both sides. And this again is dependent on what you're actually going for. You can also go into the details parameter of individual beards and make changes to them however you choose. From direction to density, seed, root radius and so on. All of these are here and you can explore them. And the pitch fuzz is basically used for creating velous hairs. And we'll just simply explain the velous hairs. And here is a simple demo that shows you how these things work. So you can use the pitch fuzz to actually get this thing going. And it is pretty interesting how much things you can get out of this tool. If you're thinking about making braids, how you make these braids are very simple. All we need to do is be within the curve mode, press the tab key. And instead of just clicking on draw and drawing, what we want to do is go over to the tools section and we're going to click on only first. What we want is we want the first vertex to be the only thing on surface. So we can use that to create hair like so. So we can actually drag that out and we can make more. So we can actually have one like so and we can go ahead and make another one like this. 
And we can make a few of them like that. I think we can make one more like so. All right, so we can have those ones. And you know, depending on what you're trying to make, you do have fun working with this one. I'm just gonna undo a few of these and let's take a look at some other things. So if you just want your curves, say for example, you wanna make like con rolls and you want this to go all the way back, what you can do is also pretty simple. So we can come through and we can start our con roll like so. Remember we turned this off so we can have that con roll go like that. And we can have another one go like this. And we can do the same thing for the rest of them. And once you're done creating, you can either use the proportional editing tool or you can simply use any of your transform tools to position this however you want. And you can always mirror this. So you can create on one side and mirror the entire thing to the other side. Now with the braids done, there's something I think you might want to check. And this is the root on any attach. And basically for con rolls, the hair actually comes out of the root for the con roll to happen. And it makes sense to turn this on just so that you can add that bit of realism when working with this tool, especially if you're trying to get a close up shot of your character. Now, there is also this very cool thing that you may want to explore, especially if you're trying to hide a couple of geometries from your viewport. What we can do is to go over to our inspector, click on the filter, and from there, we can simply turn on viewport display within the restriction toggle. And with that, we can turn off the braid curve on the viewport, and this leaves us only with the hair itself. And this is dependent on what you would like to make. So at any point in time, you're thinking about, you know, editing these things yourself, making some changes, hiding some stuff from the viewport. You do have all of these options. Now for the properties, there's a couple of cool things that exist within the properties. And this includes properties for the tail and also the hair tie. There's also a shape property, which you can use to reduce or increase the scale of the braid. You can also play with the thickness. And this is just in case you like to get a bit of a loose braid. You can have that. You can also play with the length if this is something that you're into. And if you like to have a bit more of a fluffy braid, you can of course go ahead and increase the scale. And overall, you can play with this and get some interesting thing out of it. By the way, if you're working with the braids and you like to change the object which is used in tying the braids, you can simply lock in that object right here. You can turn this off if you want and you can also proceed to turn this back on. And you know, again, this is depending on what you want. And just in case you have this turned on, maybe you like to have that, you can definitely go over to your materials and you can change the color from there. Also, you can go over to the braid section and you have a couple of interesting properties right here, which deals with the noise, the children, and also the sample and radius. These properties are right here and you can explore them and use them to enhance your braids and make them look as beautiful as you want them to be. There's also the hairline and the hairline works basically like every other thing that we've talked about. This is really good for those who are thinking about making ponytails or possibly you just want to have some baby hair on your model or possibly you just want to shave the hair, you know, get some very interesting looking hair around your character's head then this is definitely going to be the right one for you. The hairline tool is super cool. It has a lot of features that you can go ahead and explore and you can do some amazing looking stuff with this. The creator did make a few demos and these actually shows up some of the cool potentials that this tool can actually bring to the table. And if you're thinking about animating your character and you like the hair to follow up with it, this is basically what you need to do. First off, you may need to simply create a geometry node and you have to load in and head deform on big surface. And once you have that selected, if you simply go over to the geometry node section, you would notice that we've got a big section. Now within that section is where you can hit the big button and bake the hair to the model. And once this finally gets baked, what you can do is to simply apply the modifier and then attach the hair to the base model itself. And once you have that ready, you can now proceed to do your simple animation and this would work. And this is also the only time that you will be able to use the default hair combing feature to actually edit this model how you want. Other than that, this is not going to be possible in the default state that this is. So if you're thinking about baking or simply using the other tools to edit this, then this is definitely one that you can simply rely on. Something else which is also pretty interesting is the file that you saved within your library is actually a demo file. So you can open up that demo file and take a look at the demo head model that is here and you can also take a look at all of the hair presets that exist. So there's a ton of nodes that are currently available with this one. So just in case you like to explore that, see for yourself what you can do with it, you can now go ahead and see these things 
all by yourself and explore them. Here are the updates, here are the new nodes, and you can see that they are all color coded right here for you. So this is it, the hair painter tool is now here and it is pretty amazing the kind of things that you can now do with this. And for those who like to take a look at the hair painter tool or possibly you like to get human generator or any of the brand new blender add-ons that are now available, then links to this is going to be in the description so do well to check them out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.